Hey everybody, Joe Joseph here for TheDailySheeple.com, and this is your new shot to U.S. News and World Report. We go, they say a century after the pandemic, the flu pandemic, scientists are now taking, ah, their best shot at the flu, I say. Scientists are hunting for a universal vaccine to protect against the universal winter flu, if you will, and the next super flu. Um, problem is they can't even get the standard vaccine right. So why? how can you go for like the whole shebang if you can't even get the one that they put out every year right? I don't get it. It says the descriptions are, the descriptions are haunting. Some victims felt, uh, felt fine in the morning but were dead by night. Faces turned blue as patients coughed up blood, stacked up bodies, outnumbered the coffins. A century after one of the most catastrophic disease outbreaks, scientists are rethinking how to guard against the uh, flu or another super flu like the 1918 flu that killed tens of millions of people as it swept across the globe. There's no way to predict what strain of the shape-shifting flu virus could trigger another pandemic or, given um, modern medical tools, how bad it actually might be. But researchers hopeful uh, are hoping that they can uh, finally close in on stronger flu shots. Yeah, as ways to boost much needed protection against ordinary winter influenza and guard against future pandemics at the same time. Now, again, I uh, highlighted the work of John Rappaport. A couple of years ago, he uh, published a pretty stunning piece that highlighted just how few cases of flu there actually is each year um, and how the majority of cases and the uh, the majority amount of deaths attributed to the flu are actually pneumonia. It's not the flu. And that when you boil it down, I think he used the 2002 statistic that out of the 36,000 or so that died uh, between flu and pneumonia because those are classed, they're, they're put together when you classify death, that flu actually attributed for 20 out of the 36,000. So <clears throat> the need for a flu shot, first of all, is very suspect. As a matter of fact, I would wager to say that if you could uh, just inject people with placebo and do an actual study to see the actual effectiveness of the flu vaccine, you would actually see that the, probably the placebo would respond just as much, if not more, than the actual flu shot, uh, you know, people who receive the flu shot. And all I can say is whenever I did get the flu shot, all I did was get sick. And then I got sick anyway afterwards. So it never really did anything for me. It only got me sick. And God only knows what other damage it did with all the um, adjuvants they put in to these vaccines these days. Now, uh, according to Dr. Anthony Fauci at the National, National Institute of Health, he says we have to do better. And by better, we mean a universal flu vaccine, a vaccine that's going to protect you against essentially all or most strains of the flu. Mm. Again, wishful thinking when they can't even protect against one strain of the flu, let alone all the strains of the flu. Now, labs across the country and around the world are hunting for a super shot that could eliminate the annual fall vaccination in favor of one every five years or 10 years or maybe eventually, ah, Yet again, another childhood immunization that could last for life. Ah, yes, let's just pump our kids full of more chemicals. Hoorah. Fauci's uh, designating a universal flu vaccine a top priority of the National Institute of Health, uh, specifically the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Yes. Last summer, he brought together more than 150 leading researchers to map a path. A few attempts are entering first stage human safety testing. Now still, he says it's a tall order despite 100 years of science. The flu virus too often beats the best defenses because it constantly mutates. And it, it basically, think about it like this. In the military, in communications, they have a, a feature that allows or, or, or prevents the enemy, I should say, from jamming. So... What a radio will do is it'll jump around from frequency to frequency so that it can't be jammed. It's always jumping around. So no one can ever pinpoint what you're transmitting on. The flu does the exact same thing. 
it jumps around from frequency to frequency, I guess you could say, or strain to strain. And because of that, scientists have a really hard time keying in on what strain is going to be around next year. They don't, it's a crapshoot. So they want a universal thing. Well, my thing is, the, now the only way that, from a jamming perspective, that you could actually jam an anti-jam radio would be to flood it with high-powered radio frequency. I mean, super high-powered that just floods the entire spectrum. That's the only way you can do it. So I would imagine they're probably thinking about it in the same light, whereas how do we do this where we just flood the entire spectrum? Now, that would mean a lot of firepower or a lot of power that's pushed into that. So whatever it is that they use to battle this, they're going to go ahead and it's going to be a super high dose of whatever. I can only, I can see it now. And if that's the case, what further damage are we doing and what are the risks? Because you know, now, of course, it's entering the first human trial. Um, boy, I'll tell you, I've seen some um, documentaries about human trials and some of the bad things that happen when these human trials go off the rails. So I know I'm going to be watching this closely as far as how the results of this trial are published and what comes out, vice, what actually happened. So. We shall see about that. But um, Ian Wilson, a biologist at the Scripps Research Institute in La Jolla, California, said, we've made some serious inroads into understanding how we can better protect ourselves, and now we have to put it, that into fruition, said a well-known flu biologist. Yes. Let me say this. Uh, we've learned over time also um, how to guard against disease, uh, one of which, you know, back in the um, colonial days, out on the high seas, if you were uh, part of the Navy of a specific country and you were out for months at a time drinking stagnant water, uh, many people would come down with scurvy. And it wasn't until they realized after they hit some of the more tropical regions um, of the world and they were able to obtain citrus that they figured out that the way to beat scurvy was with citrus, vitamin C. Also, vitamin D. Vitamin D is also really um, very important to the human body and specifically the immune system. It's got so many different uses. But you want to know why everybody gets sick? It's because of the lack of sunlight in the winter. So people don't get as much sunlight, they get sicker. So you got to make sure in the winter you boost your vitamin D input. If you do those two basic things, you're off to a good start, and chances are you will not you know, you're going to have a better chance of fighting off the, the flu when you get it. However, you don't necessarily want to just um, go without. You want to get sick from time to time because that's how your immune system keeps in shape. And the less you get sick, the less it gets, you know, the more it gets weak. And next thing you know, when something does come around that's serious, you're not going to be able to fight against it. It makes me wonder, too, if because we're so vaccine crazy... Um, if we aren't doing more damage to us in the ter in terms of weakening our immune systems, because I've noticed over the past couple of years, um, people are getting sicker for longer. It used to be, and I don't know if I'm, this is just wishful thinking or me selective remembering, but it used to be, you know, you were sick for a week or so. And, uh, after that, maybe two weeks, maybe if it was stuck around for a while, and after that, you were done and over with, and you're waiting for spring to hit. Not so anymore. I mean, this winter, um, I've been battling things just consistently on and off all winter long. So I don't know what's going on, but I can tell you that I can sense and I can feel, based on my own personal experience, some, I don't know, it just seems to be sticking around longer. My wife, same thing. I mean, I had to take her to the emergency room. For, for uh, the, the, you know, what used to be just standard operating procedure, you get sick in the winter. So it just seems to be very, very odd. And, and I would caution against messing around and starting to screw around with more vaccines when I think we're doing more harm than good at this point. 
I'm Joe Joseph. This was the DailySheeple.com's news shot. Feel free to comment below and visit our website at thedailysheeple.com. Hashtag wake the flock up. Have a great day, everybody.